Hello everyone, today we're going to keep going through the new features for Revenue Cloud in Spring 25 and we're going to focus on the billing updates and the DRO updates. So first, if we look at the DRO updates, so there's more beyond this, but these are the ones that I wanted to focus on in today's video. So a couple new things that are available as of Spring 25 in Dynamic Revenue Orchestrator. So you can now prioritize orders for fulfillment, meaning that because this operation happens async, in Salesforce, when you submit your order for, for fulfillment, you can define uh, some the priority as you submit those for, for fulfillment. So your order will default to the default priority, but you could override that to I for specific orders if you wanted to, or in the screen flow that you use for fulfillment, so that they get treated first. So in environments where volume is fairly high, and you wanna make sure that some orders are prioritized during for fulfillment, you're going to be able to leverage that feature. Stage asynchronization is a new step type that you can use within fulfillment workspace so that the asset creation, so the fulfillment asset creation happens earlier in the process. So previously in Dynamic Revenue Orchestrator, the fulfillment assets are only getting created when the full plan is completed up to the last step. But in some cases, if you want to kick off billing or any other steps revenue recognition based on when the assets are created you can now have a step with the step type stage assetization prior to the begin to the ending of your fulfillment plan and it's going to allow you to create the assets right away and finally the other thing i want to talk about is future dated steps so you can now create steps so instead of all the steps happening one after the other you're going to be able to say okay this step needs to happen in five days, five weeks, five months, based on either the order start date or the previous steps execution date. Unfortunately, that date cannot be dynamic yet, so it's always gonna be an art coded delay based on whatever you've created on your fulfillment plan. So let's head into Salesforce and see what that looks like. So in Salesforce, the first thing we wanna look at is the ability to prioritize your fulfillment for specific orders. So as you can see, I've modified the submit order flow in here. I added a pick list for the priority where I can set this to default or I if I want to. And this gets passed into the Apex action that's in my flow where I submit. So now that order is going to take priority as it goes through fulfillment plan creation. So if we look at our flow and how it's set up, we have the submit order action. We have a couple additional options that we can set in there. One of them is the fulfillment priority, right? So right now, I'm setting this on the screen, but as you can see in the alt text there, the, prior, the value can be either I, bulk, or default, depending on how you wanna set that up. Second, second thing we wanted to look at is the ability to create assets before the end of your fulfillment plan. So as you can see in this fulfillment workspace, I've got three tasks, but now instead of waiting until the ending of the third task to create my fulfillment assets, I've created a staged asset ice type task as the second step. So if I click on edit, you can see that the step type is set, set to stage asset eyes, meaning that our assets are gonna get created when we reach that step until, uh, instead of waiting until the end of our orchestration flow. And finally, in dynamic revenue orchestration, the other thing that we can now do is define a future dated step. So as you can see, as I'm editing that current step in my fulfillment workspace, I've got the option to look at the execution schedule. So by default, nothing is selected in there and it's gonna happen as it would as, a, as soon as the previous step ends. But if you modify that value execute based on, you can look at the source line start date and say you wanna delay it based on minutes, hour, days after the source line start date, right? So you could say this only happens five hours after the source line start date. The other option is to base it on the execution date of the previous step, right? So if you want to say, okay, this should only happen X hours, days, minutes after the previous step is executed, you could set it up this way. Again, unfortunately, this is limited to fixed values and it cannot be a dynamic value based on other fields from your order product. If you want to use uh, future data steps in Dynamic Revenue Orchestrator, make sure in your environment that you go to the Dynamic Revenue Orchestrator settings and you turn on future dated steps. And now let's look through the updates for billing. So again, there are more updates than this, but these are the ones that I wanted to review. Uh, for example, some that I, I don't have on my list currently 
would be uh, usage-based products and REM deals can now be sent for invoicing and billing as of spring 25. If I don't have this, uh, we're not gonna go through this during this demo. What you can do though now is you can do ad hoc invoicing, meaning that when you create an invoice scheduler, if you wanna create only a one-off invoice scheduler to create invoices right away based on a specific set of, of filters, instead of setting the start date of your invoicing schedule to you know one minute in the future, and trying to get through creating. And that was also an issue with Salesforce billing, you know, try to create it in one minute, two minutes. So it runs as quickly as possible, but not too far into the future. You can simply set your invoice scheduler to start now. So as soon as you save it, it's gonna run. You can also now suspend and resume billing for an account. So if you need to block billing for an account for a specific period of time, as of a specific date or because of their credit terms, you have now a manual action that you can take on the account. So a quick action that's available to suspend billing, which then turns into resume billing once you've suspended billing for an account. This is also available through the API. So if you need to take action from an external service, or if you've seen my agent force video, if you want to do it with an agent or with a lightning web component, any other way you can do it through the API. Same for same goes for resume billing. You can also now create preview invoices. What this means is once you've got an activated order in the system, if for some reason you wanna see what the invoices are gonna look like, so either the next or the next two invoices that are gonna get generated for a specific order, if you wanna get a preview that, because you wanna share it with the customer without actually creating the invoices, and that's only available right now through the APIs. So there's nothing out of the box to actually call this, but it feels like a very helpful solution if you want to share some details you know as soon as you activate an order with your customer you want to show them what it's going to look like and i'm going to show you what that can look like and if you've seen again the agent force video you've seen it, you've seen me call that api to get the details of invoices and finally the other thing that i want to look at on revenue cloud spring 25 billing invoices on demand from orders and account so as with, uh, obviously you can create invoices with the invoice schedulers, but if you wanna generate invoices for either a specific order or a specific account, you've got a quick action now available on those records where you can generate invoices right away. Let's add it to Salesforce and see what that looks like. All right, so let's first look at our invoice scheduler. So if we look for schedulers in the menu, go to billing batch scheduler in a revenue cloud environment where you've got billing enabled. If I create a new invoice scheduler, and if you've tested this before, you'll see a different button now. So I've got the start run now button. So this is the ad hoc invoicing that's now available. So if I do test invoices, it's start run now, I'll see that my start date, start time, everything is grayed out because this is simply now gonna run as soon as I complete and save my invoice scheduler. So I can still set my target dates, invoice dates, but this is simply going to set right away. So nothing, nothing to schedule. And I can still use all the same filters that you would if you're creating a typical invoice scheduler. So now as soon as you hit schedule, this is going to get triggered and run through all the different batches that need to be, uh, that to be run for invoicing. Now, if we look at an account, if we want to look at the suspend and resume billing, so this is an account where I've got a couple orders active that are ready for billing. And I've got an option if we look at the drop down menu top right to suspend billing. So if I hit on suspend billing, it's going to ask me what what dates I want to suspend the, the account for. So what's the start date and end date for their suspension. So if I want to suspend from today until a month from now, right, I can do whatever selection I want and I can hit suspend. So now their account is not going to get caught in in any invoice batch or if I try to generate invoices is going to fail for that account because they're suspended. So until either an API call happens or I go to their account and it resume billing, they we won't be able to generate any invoices for that account. So I can either cancel the suspension or I can change the resume date for the billing. So if I want to set this back to earlier, I could, or I can simply cancel the, the suspension and it resume and now that account is available for billing again. Now, if we add on to an order, so let's go and look at the recently activated order. So let's grab the latest one. And as I was saying, we now have the option to do an invoice preview. So again, this is a custom component that I built for this demo. This is not available out of the box right now. So you can only generate the preview of invoices through the API for now. 
So this uh, lightning web component simply calls that endpoint. So you can decide what what's the preview date that you want to preview this starting on, right? So I want to start from today, hit preview invoice. And in this case, I only have one product that's yearly, so I only get one invoice. So I've got two things showing up now in my Lightning Web Component. So I decided to show just for informational purposes, the full API response that I get calling that endpoint for that specific order. So you can see that I get my invoice detail and all the details of the lines that are going to get invoiced next if I do generate an invoice for that order. And then I've got a formatted Lightning Web Component portion at the bottom there that shows this with a little bit more structure. And again, if you've seen the agent force demo, and I'm going to add a link to that if you haven't seen it, but I do call that endpoint through the agent force agent, and it returns all of that. And then you can use that data to share with your customer, you could even save it to a custom object if you wanted to save that data. But important to note that no invoices are generated when you do call that preview invoices feature. Now, if I do want to see what the actual invoice is going to be and generate it, again, we could go back to the invoice batch scheduler and run it for everyone. But if I only want to run this for that specific order, I can go in and it from the drop down menu again, generate invoices. And this is going to trigger invoice generation for this account specifically. What's my target date? So which dates do I want to target for invoice for uh, invoicing? And then what invoice date do I want for those? So let's do February first. And do we create them as draft or posted? So let's create as draft. And once I hit generate, we're now generating invoices and we'll get a notification once the process for invoice generation is complete. And I was saying, uh, going through the presentation, this option is now available on the order itself. But if I go on my account record, I can take the same action and generate invoices, which is going to generate invoices for all the billing schedule for that account, right? So if I've got multiple orders, all of the orders are going to get their invoices generated. So I can take again, the same action choose my invoice date, the status of my generated invoices, and it generate. So the process is launched at the account level as well. So let's see, invoice generated. So both processes already completed. So the invoice generated for order 101. And for the account itself. So if we go back to our order, we should be able to see that we've got invoices related to this. Let's add on over to our invoice object. And here we go two invoices that just get, got generated by our billing process for the full amount that we were expecting. So these were the updates I wanted to go through in the second part of the release preview for spring 25. So please take a moment to subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you've got any questions. Have a good day.